Warning, the information provided here is strictly for educational use only. Use of psychedelics can have negative side effects and in some cases may even be lethal. Viewer discretion is advised. All right, everyone, welcome to another episode of Coral Living. Tonight, we have a special guest with us. You're not going to see his face because he doesn't reveal himself, but he's got a great YouTube channel called 434, and we're going to discuss his channel and everything that it's about. Uh, but let, let's just uh, say hi to Peter, who runs the channel. Welcome, Peter. Welcome to the show. Hi, Peter. Hi. Thank you for having me. Uh, it is great. Uh, I've been going over your videos on YouTube. Uh, they are wild. There's a lot of deep uh, metaphysical uh, content on there. Uh, I think maybe the best way to start getting into this might just be for our Coral Living audience out there uh, would be to just uh, tell us a little bit about what what is 434 all about? So 434 is... Uh, as explained to me, it is uh, an equation that governs our human reality. And I discovered it by receiving for more than 17 years, I was receiving synchronicities that were increasing in frequency and intensity. And uh, I got to a stage where I was desperately looking for answers and uh, it so happened that I was looking for for a medicine for my depression, and I took magic mushrooms, uh, psilocybin mushrooms, and suddenly I was contacted by some some entity that I, I didn't know, I didn't understand what was going on, and I started looking for answers. Turns out that this is a quite frequent phenomenon. Many people are contacted by psychedelic entities from other realms. Um, we are being contacted by them in many states. One of them is NDE, so near that experience. Uh, some people do it in meditation, but people who contact these spirits or entities in psychedelic states usually call them machine elves. And this is a um, this is a term that was coined by late Terence McKenna. Uh, I think both him and his brother came up with this name, and it's a very accurate name because these entities are like bionic, difficult to describe them, like bionic robots, and they hold the keys to this reality. They know the answers, they know me, they know how we operate in this reality, they are like a metaphysical Google search engine. They have answered to every question, and uh, they told me that 434 stands for uh, three words, love, joy, and hope, with the corresponding number of letters in them, which is 434. Ah, okay. And yeah, that was quite uh, revealing. They also gave me, they showed me a logo, which is, uh, again, three figures, four edges, and the three edges, which is, you know, square, triangle, square. So basically, they gave me the whole thing, and that was just the beginning, because afterwards, they gave me explanation of what human life is about and how everything evolves around the 434 equation. So basically when they told me all of this, I decided this is important. I need to start recording and writing down everything. And every time I would trip, I would just turn on my phone and record everything they were telling me. And eventually I ended up with tens of notes of pages and I decided I need to tell people about this because these messages were really important and they were they were working. They were um, yeah, they were very important universal messages that are very difficult to find anywhere else. So I started a YouTube channel and the rest is history. The channel blew up. I was immediately censored by YouTube. Um, <laughs> but it, once my videos started getting millions of views, Facebook deleted my page. Oh. So, yeah, the, the whole thing is crazy because I'm, people don't know this, but I should be now on millions of subscribers because I was getting 1,200 subscribers a day from YouTube wow. alone. Mm. And uh, there, is a, there is a big, big uh, effort from big tech and mainstream media making sure that nobody knows about what they're telling us. Because what they're telling us is very important. These are universal truths that 
change lives and empower us. So we're being censored left and right. Um, some of us are getting into serious trouble. So I'm trying to be very careful and I'm dancing around what I'm allowed to say, what is okay for me to talk about. And occasionally I find out things that get me in trouble. And that was the case at the beginning of this year, 2022, when I discovered a few videos, sorry, a few transcripts of people who know what this reality is about. People basically who don't have their memory deleted at birth. We all have our memory deleted. We don't remember where we came from. Some of them come with the memory intact. They know everything. And what do you mean by that? That it's deleted at birth. What do you mean by that? Like, well, do you remember where you came from? Yeah, no, but like, how, like, how are they? De- how are they deleting their memories? No, no, that's just every. Hu- you're saying that for any human being, when they're born, they have amnesia from where they came from. Oh, yeah. All right. I hear so this. basically, this um, the four three four equation is what governs our reality. But for me personally, that was a big. Um, it was a, a big mission statement because they told me that they contacted me for a reason. They said, we've been, uh, we've been meaning to contact you because we need you. We need you to uh, empower as many people as possible with our messages. And your job will be to start a social media YouTube channel. We're going to tell you what to do. And they basically gave me a, a script, like a YouTube manual as to what my videos should look like. Uh, what kind of music I'm supposed to do. They, they told me the whole thing. And as soon as I did this, you know, it, it went viral. And they've been directing me ever since. They've been telling me every time I do something wrong. And um, it, it's been an amazing journey. It's been almost four years now. It's going to be four years in October. So, so how it, did you, I, can I ask you something? How did you fall into it initially in the beginning? Like you said, you took magic mushrooms, but did you, yeah. were you expecting this to happen? No, I, one day I watched, um, I, I watched Joe Rogan talking to Amber Lyon. Uh, she's an ex CNN host who went through the same process as I did. She basically, uh, got herself into a situation, a position in her life where she was exhausted. Uh, being, you know, being a part of the corporate machine, the same thing has happened to me. After 13 years for, um, of me working for big corporations, actually the biggest corporations on the planet, I discovered, I, I discovered that this is all a joke. This makes no sense. It's basically a slippery slope to suicide. And I was depressed. I, I had 20 years of depression that I needed to get rid of. And they were talking about ayahuasca and magic mushrooms. And I grew ayahuasca myself and it didn't work luckily and the next thing was me getting access to mushrooms and within one week i had mushrooms and i took them because i wanted to cure my depression which happened within one hour i was cured within one hour of taking mushrooms but suddenly i started seeing and hearing these entities and they were you know they had shapes they they um you know they're mainly close-eyed visuals but uh, these entities were giving me answers to existential questions I had my whole life. They knew personal things about me that nobody knows about me. Uh, because obviously the first reaction when you talk to people is that this is a hallucination. And I was struggling with this idea myself for a long time until they started predicting the future and started putting me in contact with my deceased family members who were telling me things that I had no way of knowing. They were telling me things that happened before my birth. They happened, they told me things about my other family members that I had to check with them and everything checked out. So the whole thing became very serious. And then eventually they started leading me on to discovering other parts of reality and then helping me understand what we are, where we came from and what human life actually is. And that's what I've been doing for the last for almost three and a half years. So I uploaded something close to 170 videos. Uh, they're usually between 10 and 30, 40 minutes. I wrote a book that I'm about to publish at some point. Uh, I actually wrote two more books that are waiting to be published. So they gave me like a huge encyclopedia of, of human knowledge, but also machine health knowledge. And they explained to me 
many things about this reality, other realities. They allow me to visit these realities. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm testing different kinds of machinery and devices that they use. It's, it's a crazy journey that way beyond what we should experience in this reality as humans. But I guess it's an added bonus for being the messenger. And there's many of us, apparently I'm not the only one. It's just that I have this unique combination of skills and personality traits that allow me to be the, you know, the brave voice of the metaphysical. And these messages are truly groundbreaking. Some of these things that I discovered change life, uh, change lives. I get people who are suicidal who come to me and, and yeah, they basically say, I no longer want to kill myself. I understand everything. So uh, it's not just, you know, crazy tree hugging hippie taking mushrooms. <laughs> no, it's actually something very profound, very deep. And I feel like it's going to have a huge impact on at least some part of society that's willing to open their minds and and listen to me. Basically, if you're into psychedelics and if you find yourself in a situation where you start hearing voices that make a lot of sense and are not an indication of you going crazy, you will definitely find my YouTube channel. Someone well, Pete, will tell you about 434 yeah. or you'll find it yourself. Peter, you seem highly influenced like the, the like mushrooms, like the stories that you tell on your YouTube channel and stuff like that, they're familiar but usually it's uh people taking a more potent psychedelic like dmt or something i've i've actually never heard of such deep profound insights like i've heard of insights coming from people taking shrooms but nothing compared to the experiences you're talking about you should uh, yeah i i have uh, oh, okay. if you if you know very much about terence mckenna who you were talking about earlier his some of him and his brother's experiences like I read one of their books about the the experiment at La Chirera, and um, that was pretty crazy some of the results of them taking huge amounts of mushrooms um, but but your channel is is amazing like I just started looking into it today actually and you've got a good number of you've got like a really good number of subscri subscribers and great content it's all super fascinating. I think you've got a great message. Um, do yeah. you, do you, like how often do you still take mushrooms? How much do you take? And is it, is it always a, kind of a direct line to these entities that have been giving you this information? Yeah, so uh, just to go back to what you were saying before, um, when you said that you know, people usually take huge amounts of psychedelics to get this type of contact that I do. It was explained to me that the reason they chose me as one of those messengers is because of my um, physical properties. So the thing is that I can get drunk with one beer. I was born a skinny guy. I have like 7% uh, body fat, which allows me to metabolize everything instantly. This is a very low BMI, and everything that goes into my body, any chemical, has immediate effect on my brain, immediately. As I said, one bottle of, of, of you know, Budweiser, and I'm starting to get really, really drunk, and then two bottles, I'm under the table. So this is the reason why they said we needed someone like you. There's plenty of these, um, these, these uh, personality traits and my physical abilities, but they said all of this combined together, your ability to... Uh, you know, work on YouTube videos, having the courage, everything like that. They said, that's perfect. That's what we needed. And that's the reason why they decided to work with me. Mm. Um, if you look, I mean, it, it is exceptionally unique because, you know, there's many people who get in contact with these machine elves and, you know, the star pilot, there's plenty of other people, who yeah. sort of put, you know, there's plenty of them. But if, if you look, if you're looking for synchronicities, uh, machine elves, psychedelics, it's very likely that you will find 434 immediately, despite the huge effort to censor me, because that's how important these messages are and how unique this channel is. This, I, I don't think there's anybody else doing what I'm doing. People are trying now. I inspired a lot of people, but when I started it, I was the first one who was actually building the niche of machine elves on 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 YouTube, and I feel like 434 monopolize this uh, this space 
So basically their uh, mission, it, it looks like they achieved what they wanted. I mean, it's still a bit problematic for me, but that's what they wanted. So you're, you're asking how it's possible that I, that I can have this deep, profound, um, this deep, profound communication with them. I don't really know how it works because I took one gram of mushrooms on, I think, 28th of August 28th, 2015, and suddenly they were talking to me. There was a bunch of weird entities, different types, different powers. You know, one of them was like a universe. And they were talking to me, giving me information that there was, you know, it was impossible for me to obtain in any other way. But um, it's because I can have this balance of contact and psychedelic insight, but it's not overwhelming my body, my system. So they said there is a sweet spot where your your body is not hallucinating, but you open the portal where you can talk to us. And they said you can achieve it easily with half a gram. And that's what I could do. I could take half a gram and I had a full on blown trip. There's absolutely no issues with how I never hallucinate. And it, it's amazing because I have a clear contact, I have a clear head, I'm not tripping like normal people do. I basically channel messages. I decided after my first trip that, you know, one gram is amazing, why not give it a go and, and try four times as much? It's gonna be four times as amazing, right? right? So this is when I discovered what it feels like to have a regular trip for a normal person. And it was a nightmare. It was a, I think, eight hour, <laughs> An eight hour trip, but two hours was an ordeal. I was dragged to hell and back. I, I made a video about this, but two entities showed up physically in my room, not close eye visuals. No, two entities showed up right in front of me and they said, You're gonna, we're gonna teach you now how to respect mushrooms, but first, we're gonna show you what it means when you disrespect them. And they locked me in, a, in, in, in an insane place for two hours where I couldn't get out for weeks. If anyone knows about time dilation on yeah. psychedelics, oh. you, you probably yeah. know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I was, yeah, I was raped by by weird dark entities. It was a horrifying experience. I almost went insane. Yeah. And it was that was the moment when I realized how I need to how I need to use mushrooms because this is not a toy. It's it's serious stuff. It's medicine. It's so many things, but it's not a thing you just take when you go to Burning Man, you, you need to respect it, especially in my case, right? You, so it well, comes with well, a lot of- Well, everybody's different there, Peter. Sorry to- Of course. I just wanted to of throw course. something in here. Um, I, I totally understand what you're saying and, and I believe you when it comes to what you're saying in terms of your metabolism's different. For you, you can take a, a respectful amount, you know, maybe a gram, whatever it is, and have access to these entities and that's not the case for everybody, but because I've found that with cannabis for myself, you know, I, I know people that can smoke like Snoop Dogg and with me a very small amount and I'm having a, a religious experience. Um, Absolutely. The, the time yes. dilation thing is very real. I've had that happen where I look at the clock and it's 11.02. I turn my head and, you know, face a manipulating universe and then turn my head back and it's 11.03, you know, <laughs> like it's... It's all making sense, and, and if you've got experience with psychedelics, you're gonna have you're gonna be able to understand a little bit of what you're saying, just right yeah. now. I just felt like so I could what, say that. What you said is is absolutely true because my job at the moment is making sure that when I work with someone, I find out first what their threshold is, and it's easy for me because I know what it's like to be a person who's threshold is very low, so I can easily categorize them whether they are supposed to say half a gram and then discover the depth of themselves or they need to go into three, four gram trips and then see if they can even feel anything. So I learned that long time ago. So are you, uh, are you helping people? Like, are, do people come to you, phone you and say, man, I need help and like, so are you kind of like a spiritual practitioner? Of course, yes. Yeah. I, when all of this went viral, um, people started coming to me saying that they need help. And Machine Elves told me that one of, well, one main job, my main job in this reality is to be a um, negativity deflecting shield for people. And I'm supposed to be a guide, a kind of a metaphysical guide who helps people with, with their problems, with, with psychedelics, that kind of stuff. 
And after two or three years of people asking me to start doing this, I decided to start offering consultations and meetings, right? I meet with people and I talk to them like I do to you now, you know, over the phone and, and on other platforms. And I've been doing this for almost two years, not a year and a half. Um, it's a donation funded service. It's something that I came up with to support myself and the channel. And it's, it's amazing. It's absolutely, it's, it's so much fun for me to, to help others. It's, it's so fulfilling. It's absolutely incredible. Sounds rewarding. You've, you've got some awesome merch, by the way. <laughs> if, you, if you check out yeah. your, your merch on your, at the bottom of your channel, it's really cool. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm trying to, it is a bit of a problem for me because I, at some point, actually three years ago, I decided that it's going to be my full-time job. I quit my corporate career and I started you know, four, three, four, full time. And it is a bit of, bit of a problem because it feels like it takes away a bit of a credibility from four, three, four because I ask for donations and I sell merchandise. It looks like a scam to some people and people have been accusing me of that for some time. And I'm looking for methods of trying to detach the financial aspect from 434 and I'm trying to somehow, you know, there would be easy. so many, there would be so many more easier ways if that was the, you know, if you've got the level of intelligence that you're displaying, why would you choose, you know, this as the, the, the scheme or whatever? I, I don't, it's yeah, well, interesting. You, you need to understand that most people do not have the level of awareness and intelligence that most of us have. You need to understand that psych people with psychedelic awareness are at the top of the IQ curve battle, they are really smart people because it takes a lot of intelligence and open-mindedness to let, watch 44 video and not say, this guy is absolutely nuts. It really takes a lot of intelligence and knowledge to actually know what I'm talking about. It's not an easy language. It's, well, I tried to make it easy. My job is to translate the metaphysical to human, but it's not something that an average person will watch and go, oh yeah, he has a point. No, the first reaction will be, this is crazy, you know, crazy hippie talking. But it, it's, it's not about that. It's basically understanding that 434 is in, in, in incredibly time consuming. That's my biggest problem. So yeah, intelligence is, is one thing, but it takes up my whole day, I wake up, I start checking messages, then I plan the rest of the day, and I work until I go to sleep. That's 16 hours a day with a few breaks for, you know, eating and, and taking like one hour a break. It's insane. I don't really have much time for anything else. And it's not an incredibly lucrative, uh, you know, profession. It's not like, you know, I'm, I'm getting millions or whatever. No, I, I have a family to support. I have my everyday life that I need to take care of, but at the same time, talking to aliens and I need to help people <laughs> not kill themselves. It's absolutely insane. I have no idea how all of this is. It, you, you know, you lose friends in the process. I've lost most of my friends, especially once I realized what the truth is. And that happened only at the beginning of 2022, after the pandemic. I was given access finally to the truth after years and years of, of, of looking for, for the, you know, what the core of the truth is, I finally got there. Now I know what I'm working with. I can connect the dots. But the the amount of work and, and mental energy that it used up, that's absolutely insane. I feel like I'm 80 at the moment. And I'm still not. I, I don't even know if I'm halfway through. I don't even know where I am on my journey of discovery. I don't know how far I'm supposed to go. They told me that it's going to take up all of my life. And it's going to be continued by other people, by the way. I already know who's going to be, be taking over. So it is a crazy journey. And yeah, I need to come up with some methods of, as I said, making money. Just to answer your questions before, uh, you were asking about how much I take. I don't take that much anymore because these trips are getting more and more intense and more and more difficult. The more knowledge I have, that, that's the problem with this uh, machine of trans, um, transmission is that it's, this knowledge is organic, it's alive. It's not like I wrote the notes right. and everything stays the way it was. Every new message ties into another message from the past and changes it. And then 
Right. It creates a whole new connection for new messages. If this thing always evolves, always morphs right. into Right, just like everything else. else in reality. Everything in reality I'm, is constantly changing and updating. Everything. You know what? Concepts. I yeah, I think I wrote before I started forty four. I wrote a book about nutrition, and that was a pretty pretty straightforward process. It was quick and easy. And I wrote that book. It, it was done. There was no I. Before that channel, I had other viral channels with tens of millions of views. They were viral. They they had huge impact on, I mean, on society. At least in England, there were some very important things that I did. But that was easy. But when it came to this psychedelic metaphysical stuff, that thing is out of control. I, there's there's absolutely nothing that I can do about it. That's one of the reasons why I've been writing the book about machine the the book is now 250 pages, and there's no end in sight. I cannot finish it because every time I trip, I get new messages that change the whole book because everything's being um, yeah. it, it morphs into more. Um, I would say more not reliable, but something more closer to the truth. You know, yeah. and every trip, every message changes many other chapters. It completes them, and it changes the meaning again. So the book is. Partially about the messages, but also my own conclusions, and these conclusions change a lot. So I started removing of them as much as I can, and and it, it's still complicated. So I take mushrooms at the moment, maybe four or five times a year. So maybe once every two months, and um, it's a problem because once I take mushrooms, I need to stop everything and. I need to get all the messages, it takes a few hours, then I need to transcribe everything, that takes usually a few days, and then I need to unpack all the uploads and make videos, and that takes a few months. So by the time I'm finished, you know, I, I need to take mushrooms again, because every few months you feel like you need to take them again. It feels like you're tired again, like you're, you're losing energy. You know, people usually know what mushrooms do to you. It's like NZT48 in Limitless with Bradley Cooper. That movie, I think, is about civil cyber. I think it actually shows what it does because it makes you incredibly intelligent. It connects you with other realms. And not it, for it, everybody. Not not necessarily for everybody, but for you, right? Like like the same way that you metabolism, you metabolize it, and it kind of opens this whatever gateway to these entities. Not everybody gets that, and and. They um, do. That's one thing that happens to almost 95% of everybody who takes mushrooms. Even if they don't get the insight or the contact, yeah. it does something to the hormonal balance, something to do with serotonin, dopamine, and people completely reset their uh, their brains usually. And it was it was proven oh, scientifically. Right. Right. Oh, right. I thought I, I was I was just referring to the like um, I was confused. I was referring to the entities. In fact. No, 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 that's, that's very unique. I, yeah. I'm, I'm collecting people who have that access. There's a few of us. I talk to thousands of people and I'm looking for them actively. And the moment I find someone, I know immediately because number one, they use the machine of language. It's very specific. I, you know, the moment I hear it, I know that this is, they don't speak human. They speak very funny, like almost artificial. Yeah, artificial AI language. That's why people argue that this is, you know, you're being possessed by artificial intelligent demons. And I'm you're, like, no. You're that's talking to Lambda. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, basically, they try to come up with their own theories. But the moment I see that language, and these people use that language, I'm like, okay, that's legit. And then we start comparing notes. Turns out that we have the same messages, but some people have different aspects of the same message. And then we start building the, the what, let's say one particular aspect of um, you know human reality let's say human origin so i know this bit and they know the part of the story that i i haven't received yet and then we you know we merge it and then we have a bigger picture of that and then we can use it to you know make an update video and it's more like when we work collectively it gives us an, an amazing insight into what human reality really is and by the way, there are people who are real shamans, people who know much more than me, and they don't want to share that knowledge. They very often get in touch with me, they tell me where I make mistakes, they tell me what needs to be corrected, they usually um, they compliment me when I go in the right direction, but there are true insiders in this reality. Occasionally they come to me, they don't really want to 
talk to me too much, but I'm being observed and guided by some powerful, not in a, in a physical sense that they hold power, no, no they're powerful entities who, who come here and, you know, inhabit human bodies. Like, we are, we're all entities, but these people have knowledge that most of us haven't, you know, you, you cannot even dream of knowing what they do, what, what they know. Peter, but, uh, Peter yeah. uh, uh, we, we've talked a lot, like, you, we've mentioned machine elves, but, f like, and, and, and the insights that come from these entities in these psychedelic experiences. But for, like, I know there's going to be people who are watching this, uh, and they're, they're going to be thinking, what, what is he talking about, machine elves? For, like, just the, the straight layman out there, what, what is a machine elf? So basically, this is a spirit or an entity that decided to get in contact with you. As I said, these are normally what we refer to as spirits, ghosts, um, I don't know, fairies, whatever we call them. We've been in contact with these entities for as long as humans exist, for thousands of years. But it's normally in trance, in, in, um, you know, in near-death experiences, some people call them angels, they tie them through religious beliefs, that kind of stuff. The truth is, we're constantly in contact with spirits and entities. We just decided to call them machine elves because we get in contact with them in psychedelic states. In psychedelic states, it's a bit of a different story because it's not just hearing voices, very often we see their shape, we see their form what they're made of. And we also encounter them in geometric algorithmic realities. And all of this creates a very unique and intense experience, right? What makes so them elf-like? Like, like I, was well, on, I had an experience one, one time on mushrooms, and the closest thing I could describe, uh, like the closest thing to encountering an entity that happened was something that on a very superficial, could have been easily just my imagination, I felt like I was witnessing something that looked like uh, very geometric, kind of triangular, and I got the subtle sense that it was maybe an entity. That's like the closest to Terence McKennaville I ever got. But I've, this this idea of identifying them as elf-like or elves. Are they what, small? Is that what's going on? Are they? What makes them elf-like? Are they? Yeah. Well, <laughs> if you look at folklore and all the stories of. Uh, I mean, Snow White and Seven Dwarfs. Where, where do you think that come from? That I came from. That is uh, basically people hallucinating on mushrooms because they all come from the same time. They all come from um, old tales of mushrooms in fall. You know, right after summer. They all talk about the same entities that look like like gnomes, like tiny dwarfs. Basically, when people take psychedelics, they most of them will find well find out that um, they are in contact with the same entity. And whether it's a soccer mom who accidentally took LSD or an, an experienced scientist, very often they find these um, morphing, um, you know, jokesters like like whatever they are. You know, they um, they look like elves. You know, these tiny elves that we know from fairy tales. I mean, you can even listen to Joe Rogan's podcast. He said that he took DMT the first time, and there were there were tiny little jesters that looked like elves, and they were laughing at him. Yeah. That's what everybody sees, and it's especially on LSD and DMT. I've never seen one on mushrooms. Never. My experience is quite limited because I've only done mushrooms, and also weed. Weed is for me super psychedelic. But not once in my life have I ever seen a tiny elf. But people who take LSD, I mean, my wife told me about them when we were young, when we were teenagers, she told me about them. And I had no idea back then about anything, any psychedelic. She was talking to them. And she's totally not into psychedelics. Like, she took LSD and she was like, oh, yeah, they're little tiny elves. And they, huh. they, you know, they're funny little pranksters. And they laugh at you and they're really cute. And this story, I've been hearing the same story for decades. But the thing is that I think Terence McKenna decided to call him that because his experience was very unique and very different. And for some of us, they're not really elves. They, they're more serious. Um, so I do occasionally see machine elves that look like tiny mushrooms, like 
I would call them electronic mushrooms. They look like robots, bionic robots. They have a form of a mushroom, but they look like tiny little insignificant beings. And you take that being on your hand that it tells you the, a, a thing that you were thinking about for 20 years and suddenly you have the answer and it's like, goodbye, and it just goes away. And De you're depending, thinking, on what what you're, depending on what you're pre-programmed to think, I can tell you exactly what certain uh, religious people are going to think. They're going to think, oh, they're demons in disguise. They're demons well, disguising themselves as cute little things to come confuse that's you. That's true. Yeah, yeah, that's true because um, there's a lot of prejudice. And I, I just made, I just uploaded a video, religion versus spirituality. That should explain. I, I was shocked myself when I collected all the arguments, and I'm like, whoa, religion is evil. Like I didn't realize it, but I I wrote that <laughs> video. Kind of like, absolutely crazy how uh, possessive religion actually is and it's because i made a video because many people come to me saying that they're they're you know they're in prison of religious ideology that they were indoctrinated with and they need an escape and they're like tell me about spirituality so I've, i did it a few times and you know i was like okay enough is enough i need to tell i need to tell people about this religion is dangerous right but let's not concentrate on these people. That's not important. I don't really discuss this with people who are not willing to understand what I'm saying because it's a waste of time. You will not change anyone's mind if they don't want to open it. Smart. I basically concentrate on people who already know what I'm talking about or are curious enough, which yes. means there is a reason for them to come to me so that I can tell them what it is. And that's what I do. So everybody knows the people who have access to um, psychedelic experiences most of them know what these entities look like and a big majority of them, I mean even Alex Jones he talks about them like you know small little elves because that's what most people see for people like Terence McKenna and uh, like me star pilot we see it differently we have access to a completely different energy form that they are willing to present to us and they told me that they take a piece of us and they create their shape for us to have something to attach the communication to. So they said, we take this, a piece of you and then we use the divine energy, the so-called uh, rainbow river, and we create our image for you. And so I guess it has a lot to do with who's transmitting the message. And I think people like, um, you know, there's a guy called, I think, Andrew, Andrew Gonzalez, his name is, I had him on, on a podcast, who actually categorized, categorized the type of a vision and uh, what type of a psychedelic realm you go to, depending on the type of a, psych of a, of a psych psychoactive substance and the intensity of the experience. And it's really interesting because it's universal. Like, you can, like, you can compare your experiences and you'll be like, yep, that's exactly what happened. That's what I took. That's yeah. where I went. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah. There's a lot of the same kind of thing. It's you know people that I've never met saying saying similar experiences, and I think they found that like crazy when they were first experimenting with DMT. Um, yeah, you know, what, what the, the crazy thing is, the, you know, the amount of shared experiences and knowledge that we get because it's physically impossible. There's not a single case of shared hallucination in human science. So it means it doesn't exist. You cannot have the same hallucination. Yet somehow, there's plenty of people who get on machine of spaceships and they all look the same and they talk about the same experiences. I mean, Star Pilot, she's a pilot who's flying these. She's a metaphysical pilot flying these spaceships. <laughs> I've never heard of that person. Yeah, who, who, who are we talking about? Well, you, well if you, so most people who watch 434, um, they know that there's a girl who I, actually she found me, she came to me saying, listen, I'm actually piloting these spaceships on, on mushrooms. And That's I amazing. said, you, you're the only person I know, she said the same, she said, you're the only person I know who knows about machine or spaceship. Uh, now I have a lot of people who come to me with, uh, with these experiences. I mean, Star Pilot is the only one who, who do, who's the pilot. She's the only one who's flying these spaceships. She actually knows that they're alive, they have um, souls and uh, they have missions. They alive. They're entities. Are it's we seeing complex. her when, when when people look up at the sky and see uh, <laughs> yeah. UFOs? Are they seeing Star Pilot? <laughs> no, no, that's very different. She basically has the same experiences as the rest of us, and she goes deeper. She actually connects with these spaceships, 
and she can fly them. She's the actual metaphysical pilot. She can fix them. It, it's insane. That is this crazy. is so cool. You have no idea what. Well, we recorded a lot of videos together. There's even a video called, you know, Machino Spaceship. But the thing is that it's impossible for us to have the same experiences and see the same entities. Occasionally, we need the same ones. Um, there's this. Um, there's this one entity, um, I think it's called the Egyptian god Ra. The purple that girl? one entity, what's that? Is that the purple lady? There's there's one that I've heard of that more than one people, more than one yes. person has seen the purple so, lady. That's another one, but there's an, uh, there's one, the Eye of Horus, the, um, the, the, the one with the, the beak and, and the bird's head. It's absolutely crazy that everyone, is, everyone gets visited by that, by that one entity. Um, there's a lot of, oh yeah, of course, Mother Nature, Mother Gaia, everyone gets visited from her. That's, that's crazy too. Like for some reason, everybody gets visited by that. I'm missing and, out. <laughs> what's that? I said, I feel like I'm missing out. I, I, maybe I'm, yeah. I, I want to see, you know, who doesn't want to see elves and stuff, but I don't know. It's, you know, it's actually quite, um, it's not good because I get people who come to me saying that they're taking insane mushroom doses. I know a guy who took 30 grams oh my God. because he was so desperate to get in contact with them. And the truth is that they told me, the first trip, they told me, we contact you. It's not up to you to get in touch with us. And if you try to break in, we'll punish you. Right. And that's what they do. And unfortunately, many people don't understand that they need to be very careful because it's a, it's a sacred process the sacred substance that you need to be very careful with it's you know in the wrong hands and you know in the wrong dose you could end up in a hospital people end up doing crazy stuff there's your disclaimer yeah. right there yeah. there's your disclaimer watch out everyone and of course mushrooms can be dangerous i made mean, that was like my fourth or fifth video i said mushrooms can be dangerous and i myself went to a place that could have really made me insane. Uh, it's only because I won't overdose THC. That was the only time where I really regretted taking edibles. But that one experience prepared me for what happened on mushrooms. And if it wasn't for that, I don't know what would have happened to me yeah. because it's serious stuff. It can change your personality forever. And I have people who come to me saying, I took too much and I, it's been months and I cannot get back to being myself. So yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's something that everybody needs to be aware of. It's, it, it, you need to treat everything with respect and listen to the videos that I'm recording. I'm, you know, I'm, I spent the last four years talking to you almost every few days. And, you know, I also record podcasts. I, um, I talk to people in, in consultations. I meet people. I organize meetups. I try to make sure that you have access to this knowledge and it's important for people not to be lazy intellectually and saying, oh, I'm just going to trip and see what happens. You need to be prepared. You need to what you're getting yourself into because mushrooms can irreversibly change your, your life and your world forever, sometimes for good, but if you're not prepared and you're not ready to delete your existence because it'll happen very often, then you might end up in a very bad place where you will be without friends with knowledge that you don't know what to do with and with a whole new perspective on existence that you're not really prepared for. So the machine, the machine elves, um, what is their grand, like, do they, like, what is the purpose of them? Like, do they have a big overarching message for humanity? Yes, they do. One thing that they want everybody to understand is that love is the currency of this existence. And it's not just exclusive to machine of knowledge because everybody who comes back from, you know, outside reality on after near that experiences, uh, they come back with the same message. And whether they believe that it was Jesus or some kind of a divine force, whatever they believe, it's always the same message. That's one thing everybody agrees on. Love is what controls this reality. And machine elves went a bit deeper. I made a lot of videos about love, trying to explain it, and I still don't feel like I explained even the introduction to the book about love, because apparently there are whole universes made of love, and entities explain to me that we don't understand what it is. We try to use it in this primitive human form. We take advantage of what it allows us to experience, which is basically uh, you know, self-acceptance, uh, connection to other humans, but they said we don't understand what love is capable, 
the capacity for love, what we can do with it, how, how it works, how it opens the um, metaphysical properties of this realm that we're still not taking advantage of. How do, we know, incredibly... how do we know that love is the right word for it then? Because, um, you know, the way people typically use the word love is like, if you break it down, like somebody may say they love their spouse or they love their, their kids or something, but there's oh, always like, a, there's always like a, some kind of a contract involved in those things, you know? You're absolutely right. The, the worst thing is that English language is doing a really bad job at uh, using that word because native English speakers are, I love the burger, I love my dog, I love you, honey, you know, all kinds yeah. of stuff that you use one word love for. My job. for example, yeah, yeah, basically you go to Japan and you'll find that they have a completely different vocabulary for, for love. It's still not as complex as on, on the psychedelics, but many languages, you know, even European languages, they use very different words for their very different type of love. It, sometimes it's descriptive, but it's uh, there's many shades of love. In English, it's very flat. It's just love and, and that's all, right? It means admiration, but you love everything, right? The English people, especially Americans, they overuse that word, unfortunately. And I think they bastardize it. They, they butchered it. And it's unfortunate because the, the actual feeling is incredibly complex. It changes reality. The, the things that I've experienced on, in mushroom realms with the entities, what they showed me, they did show me what we could do with love if we if we wanted to, only if we wanted to. And you know, you need to understand that there are only two emotions in this reality. There's only love and fear. And everything else is just a byproduct of that emotion. So everything negative is is really a byproduct of fear, whether it's aggression, um, anything, you know, envy, jealousy, whatever you feel, that's usually it it has its foundations in fear. Love is the same, everything positive, or, or you know, you look at gratitude, you look at joy, whatever it is, it's love in the, in, in, in the foundation of every positive feeling. It all goes back to the same place. And somehow, we don't connect the dots, and we don't ask ourselves, how is it possible that two emotions control our reality? Because, in fact, it's only one, because fear is absence of love. So you have one emotion that controls everything. And it's so powerful that when you take it away, it destroys your life. And yet we don't really ponder how deep it goes. And this is what psychedelics do. Unfortunately, human body is a very potent filter in, 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 you know, in, in transmitting love. But at the same time, can be used as an amplifier, as an enhancer, and we don't really take advantage of it mm. because it's difficult. You know, our our conditioning and the controllers of this reality make sure that we don't have access to it. They do a very good job at distracting us. Are they informed yeah. by some kind of evil entities or something like that? Like what? Like why? Why no. this? Cons why would? Why would they be so aware of how these things work and and be putting so much? Uh, thoughtful effort into suppressing it are they is there good is that just like the, maybe these entities you're contacting are kind of benevolent are there malevolent beings that are pulling strings no. on the other side no no there are no evil beings there are only lost spirits very often who don't understand the consequences of their behavior but they're not evil they basically uh sometimes they're playful sometimes they're just lost and they just do you know like a, like a I don't know, Michelin man in Ghostbusters that goes through New York City and, and basically <laughs> wrecks all the buildings, but it's just trying to do something, right? It's, just, it's not its fault that it's so huge. That's right. pretty much what these entities do. But when you're asking about the people who control this reality or entities who control this reality, imagine if you wanted to create a place of incredibly intense training capabilities. Imagine you want to create a perfect Navy SEALs training. What are you going to do? What are you going to fill those swimming pools with? Marshmallows and jelly beans? No. You're going to fill it with barbed wire and mud, right? That's pretty much what training is about. Every time you want to complain about evil, look at what the pandemic did to us. I don't know about you, but this has been the quickest, fastest, track training session that I could have asked for.
I've learned so much in these two years that I could have died not knowing that I'm surrounded by fascists and, and people who are willing to shoot me because I'm basically intelligent and I understand what's going on. You would never, you could never find out that any other way. But somehow these entities, these people in control, say, said, okay, let's put you through another test. We're going to create something so insane that we will convince you that it's for your own good, and we're going to do it so that you do everything voluntarily. And now we have a society divided into two types of people, and you can do whatever you want with this. But that's what they've been doing. Forever. They basically created a polarity in this world where we come and we, through suffering and pain, we develop so fast that when you come back to the spirit world, you're a celebrity. This is how difficult this reality is. But we see it as evil. Well, evil is basically pain, and pain is development. You develop outside of your comfort zone, and when you embrace discomfort, that's when you go forward. You don't develop when you're good, when you're a millionaire, when you're happy, all the coke and hookers. You don't go anywhere. You stay in place because that's where it feels good. When it feels bad, that's when you start looking for answers. That's when you start developing and finding solutions. So that's how it works, pretty much. So is humanity trying to, like, are we in a situation right now where we're trying to, like, learn some profound, ans like, lessons about love and like upgrade or something is that what's happening yes so your soul is on a constant path of development your job is to merge back with the creator it's an eternal journey that it, i don't know how long it takes but it's described as eternity whatever you define eternity as that's up to you apparently it takes forever but i've heard you mention the law of one before and that's that is a very similar type Take it's one of the yeah. It's one of the versions. When you look at, at a lot of these um, ancient texts, they mention it. There's actually a Greek philosopher who described perfectly what it is. He's forgotten. Nobody knows about it. But he, I looked at what he believed in, and I'm like, oh, that's a machine of knowledge. And the guy is like from three thousand years ago. Mm -hmm. So there are many people throughout history. There's many religions who try to touch on that a little bit. Um, I think there's a little bit of Tao. Um, I think Hinduism and Taoism, they both try to explain in a similar way. But what I'm trying to find is I'm trying to get to the core of the truth because all religions are distorted. They're created by humans on purpose. And they're supposed to distract you by giving you tiny hints and like tiny bits of knowledge and then you're supposed to get lost. So that's also a creation of those who control us. You're supposed to worship humans, which is pretty much a sin, and a dead end, right? So when you do this, you don't go anywhere. You become you know, a devout Christian and you're gone. There's nothing else that's ever going to get to you. You're no longer open to any ideology. That's why I made that video, right? Yeah. But what I'm trying to create, I'm trying to get to the bottom of it. I'm trying to get to a place where there's no other stories. And a few months ago, I found that place. I found what we are, what we do here. And it seems that Earth is apparently a very intense uh, training ground arena. It's like a projection or a simulation where you come to train yourself in your uh, whatever, you know, whatever it is that you want to train yourself in. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> well, if you've, listen, if you've I'm seen the serious Lost, yeah. you know, there's this uh, from 10 years ago, it's called Lost. It has like four or five series. It's crazy good because at the end, it actually explains what it is. You see, these love people, Mario, lost. lost, yeah. Yeah, very I love that show. <laughs> it's amazing, but most people don't get to the last episode. And the last episode explains exactly what human life is. If you come here, you need to work out some stuff, and you come here in a group. You have the same group, and you guys have been doing this forever. And you're supposed to go to a very intense, fast-track training session and go back and repeat the same thing again until you learn everything you're supposed to learn. And then you can move on to the next form, because apparently physical form is just temporary. And then you move on to non-physical, but apparently you cannot go to the next stage until you master being a human. And that's something Machine Health told me recently. They said, 
Your job is to become a perfect human. And when you think about this, what does it, what does it mean to be a perfect human? Well, it means no longer be bothered by human reality, something we all struggle with. We're all here because we are not good at being human. You're still controlled by your emotions. Many of us are controlled by our addictions and all kinds of you know compulsions. We you know we, we don't really dedicate our lives to what's important. We like our tiny little habits like eating junk food, all kinds of stuff. We suck at being humans. We basically destroy our lives for whatever this addictive world has to offer. And there's nothing really valuable in this reality. When you think about what people want, it's usually one of those three things. It's uh, money, women, drugs. There's yeah. usually all these three things that control your reality. It's all crazy. It's, the, the, it's like, I don't care if you're a religious person or you're a secular person, you're exactly right. Most people, if not everybody, unless they're friggin' enlightened or something, is completely consumed by being addicted to like salt, sugar, sex, drama, whatever the hell it is. That's well now that is we like have, everybody. But now we have fame. That's something that just showed up a yeah. few decades ago on the radar. That's something yeah. completely different. And it's because this via this reality is incredibly difficult. Apparently there are highly advanced beings who want to work out tiny, tiny bits of their existence, their personality, if you want to call it, you know, the, the form, energy form. They're like, I'm going to descend to Earth for a moment, just this one existence, because there's something I want to do. And they, like high density, you know, like sixth, seventh um, density beings, and they come here to Earth and they're like, oh, damn. I did nothing. I just spent the whole time having sex, doing drugs, and I forgot what I came here for. Okay, let's do it again. So it's not just us, low density humans. We're, you know, we're struggling with this reality. I read about a guy who took three and a half thousand years to work out jealousy. It, it really, that one example really shook me because it's, that's 80 existences at least, if not more. So. That's scary. That's scary because I'm really tired of being here. I don't know how many times I've been here, but I really don't like it here. This is yeah. not my place. And yeah. apparently there are many other worlds and you can create your own world when you go to the spirit world. But Earth is so low frequency, so dense and so crazily addictive that if you pass the test here, you're a super B. You're someone who's ready to go somewhere else. But many of us repeat the same thing over and over again because it takes many times to go through this. That's why we have reincarnation. That's why there are people who remember what it's like to be, you know, to be a, a prince or, or, for example, I know exactly what it feels like to murder someone in a shed and bury them next to the river. I've been having this dream for years and I don't understand why. So that's, a I past life, like. that's a past life regression or something? I have no idea. I know how to use guns. I was born and I immediately started going to uh, shooting ranges and I'm, I'm good at it. I'm really good at shooting guns. I don't know how. It's wow. just something that I'm, I came here with, right? My wife, she knows exactly what it's like to be a freaking princess and she behaves like one. And I'm, I don't mean being like, you know, this proverbial princess. No, she's fed up with peasants. She's like, everyone's below me. Like, how is it possible? I'm nobody, but I feel like I'm royalty. And she even knows a cemetery here in England where she's buried. And apparently it's just like some kind of a, you know, part of a royal family or something. I am too busy with my own, you know, existence, my past to concentrate on hers. But we all have these stories. Many people come to earth with some weird chaos abilities or stories that they cannot explain. And that's exactly that. We, once you have a child, you realize that you don't come to this world with, uh, sorry, you don't, you're not raised by your parents. You come to this world with a personality. And anyone who has a child knows about this. And that's something nobody talks about. Right. And it's very traumatic, probably, having other people try to manipulate you and change your God-given personality. Well, that's what human reality is for. Machine Oats told me that, listen, nine to five, that's when I was quitting my job. It was a very lucrative, you know, career. And they said, listen, nine to five is a, an imitation of life. They said, it's not real life. You humans are crazy what you're doing. It seems these machine are somehow outside of this whole thing. I think they're like little helpers. 
who are trying to tell us how to get back on our path. Their job is pretty much to help us get where we're supposed to get, to, to speed up our development. And they said, you all do this nine to five, and it's insane. First of all, you don't need that money. You spend it on junk that you keep yeah. in your garage, and it's absolutely pointless. And then you spend more money that you don't have, and you get yourself in debt, and then you work even more. And they say, what are you doing? Like, this is insane. You should oh, stop right now. There are oceans then, of people living these lifestyles to impress people they do not like. Like, oh, it, it's, a, it's an absolute tangled mess. And yeah. and sometimes you have to distance yourself a little bit from it. And because, well, you uh, can only distance yourself when you realize that this is the addictive property of Earth. Because it's not that you want to work, you're being told to work. Yeah. You go to school that's supposed to prepare you to have a job. That's the only purpose of the educational system. So that you get out and you get one job, which is bananas. Like this makes zero sense because you can get a job. <laughs> Like doing, a, you know, a apprenticeship. That's all. I, I was in recruitment for years, and I would have hiring managers come to me and say, "Listen, find me a guy with ten years of experience and a PhD in that particular field of science, or find me a guy who's willing to learn and he's very open-minded." That was the deal, right? These two people who have nothing in common with each other, but he said, "We're going to train this one. It's going to be cheap, and he's going to be as good as the guy." who has a PhD and has worked in the field for 10 years, even better, because that one I can model to what I need from him. Yeah. So it's a complete scam. It, it costs, I mean, I was sitting next to a girl who was studying some kind of gender studies, and she spent 70,000 pounds, which is like $100,000 to sit next to me and work for me as an admin. And she was 25, hundred thousand dollars in debt and i'm like how do you feel why did you do this she's like oh it was fun i enjoyed it i was like do you know how much fun i can have for hundred thousand dollars do you know the things i could do and i'm like this is insane what kind of deal did you sign it makes no sense you're gonna spend the next 20 30 years paying this thing off and you will it's not that it's a choice now for you to work no you have to work because you have an axe hanging over your head and yes. it, it, that's what humans do. And it, you know, this reality is getting more and more difficult because these systems develop. The more we, um, the more we're submissive, the more we subscribe to them. These in control are like, look at these idiots. They went, they fell for it. Okay, let's you know, crank it up a little bit. Let's see how far we can push it. And they're like, oh, they fell for it again. Yeah, then let's do it again. And they keep increasing the intensity of the whole thing. And we're at, a, we're at a point now where they told you that you're supposed to drive an electric car, which is a physical and scientific impossibility when everybody switches to it. And everybody's like, okay, let's go ahead with this. That's human reality. That's what we do to ourselves because this is a training simulation that if you don't pass, you're gonna pay for it probably with your own life and you're gonna repeat this and you will do it until you learn your lessons. And unfortunately, it takes some of us, I, I don't know how many existences, but I can tell by speaking to them that they have a long journey ahead of them. Ooh. Oh. That's, that's scary. <laughs> yeah, it sounds... You know, it's, to me, like, if somebody can't identify that this realm, whether you've, you've, you're successful by society standards or you're not, if somebody can't be honest enough to admit that there's a whole hell of a lot of suffering going on here, like, to the point where you could get everything you want, and there's still an element of friggin' suffering here, you know, because we're we're organic, and maybe it's because it's a low frequency or whatever. Sometimes I get the feeling like I could. Sometimes I get the sense that um, something that may help would be people stopping the flow of of just giving into all this corruption and living it, you know, just being too fearful to stand up to the corruption they see around them. Admit to themselves and to the world where they've been completely wicked and then, and you know, have to sacrifice some of these things they've built up around them, built on lies and methods that, you know, are not focused on the good of everybody and reverse the tide a little bit, you know, like, like, I don't know if I'm being clear enough. I think that there's a lot of, um, deception going on 
in everybody, in, even in myself. And I think that there's a reckoning that you don't want to get too out of hand before you you stop the presses, you know, and you 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 try to be as absolutely honest as possible about your true state. Not you. I'm just talking about you know humanity here. Um, how are we supposed to know what's really going on, and how are we supposed to really end our suffering that seems to go on in this realm if we if we if we lack an ability to be honest about how we really think and feel about things? What the definite well, objective truth is. Well, here's the deal. Your job as an entity who comes to this reality is to halfway through, or at any point of your existence, become a lucid gamer. You're supposed to wake up and realize, wait, there are rules to this game. Not only there are rules, but also there's an algorithm that doesn't follow human science. And that's where you look at synchronicities, making switches, all kinds of supernatural stuff like telepathy. Something that I magically developed now. I, I can also look into the future, clarify all kinds of things that suddenly make zero sense. So once you start realizing that something's not right, you're not supposed to just brush it off and go, nah, I'm gonna have a burger and see what, it, what will happen. No, you're supposed to concentrate on it. And that also shows your level of advancement. So that's rule number one of this reality. You're supposed to wake up and start connecting the dots. And you need an open mind for that. That's quite advanced. And once you do this, once you're at this stage, and you'll get there, if you stop discussing, doubting, and always being a smart ass who knows everything better, once you stop doing that, you will see that there's a whole world of knowledge and truths that are hidden from your primitive brain. Once you start opening yourself to having two opposing ideologies in your brain and understanding that there is a third one that somehow takes elements from both of them, that's when you realize that, hold on, these are all scripts. This is propaganda. This is not what the truth is. Hold on, that makes no sense. You, of course, you also need courage because you need to stand up to people who laugh at you. The moment you realize you don't live on a spinning globe in the middle of the universe, that's what children believe in. You have to be an idiot. Like you also can put your arm, you know, put your hand in your underpants, touch your butt, and see that there's a <laughs> bone that is probably missing the rest of the tail. Like, you used to have a tail. Somehow you had a tailbone. It's even called that scientifically. But somehow you don't have a tail. But guess what? Occasionally, there is a human born with a tail every few decades. So right. wait, wait, wait. That means our DNA somehow was changed so that we don't have a tail, but we used to have it. So that means we're actually engineered. So the whole theory of evolution is a bunch of baloney on that. Wait, 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 what else is not true? Well, you look at the moon, you find out that there's a map of Earth. All the black spots, somehow, if you look at them, well, that's the map of human reality. Like, that way, that makes no sense. So the further you keep going and you start discovering these things, God forbid you discuss them with anyone, you realize that something's seriously not right with this reality. You look around yourself and you see that every church is uh, octagonal shape and it ends with a spiral that has a tiny ball at the bottom and you'll find the same church in japan in africa and europe and you need to ask yourself wait how did they you know how did they transport these you know architectural plans how is it possible that they all have the same structure and why do they have this structure and then you'll learn about the reset that happened recently you'll learn about the catacombs filled with millions of bones of humans of the same age, all killed in the same way. And you start asking these questions and you'll get to, to a place where you are literally insane to an average human being. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, a lot of that stuff that you kind of threw in there was shocking. Yeah. But, yep. um, I, and I don't know anything about it. But um, well, the, the best thing is that once you start digging deeper, that's just the first layer of truth. And it's right in front of your eyes. It's everywhere you look. Right. And that makes you feel like an idiot. And you're supposed to feel like an idiot. Because once you realize that you're not smart as you think you are, that's when, you know, you being humble, I mean, hopefully you're humble, you basically realize that, wait, there are smarter people. There's more knowledge than I know. And I've been indoctrinated. Now I need to open my mind. And when you do this, you realize that, wait, I don't have enough life to re-educate myself. 
And then you start getting really crazy because you will have to be really smart about the information that you let into your head. And that moment will be the place when you realize that, oh, that also applies to my worldview. Because I, when I no longer see propaganda, something magical happens. And that thing will be you understanding yourself. And you will start seeing yourself as the, the entity that you are. And you start seeing others as entities. You'll start understanding what the world is really made of and how it is being, you know, it's like um, Toto pulling the curtain on the, you know, on the man behind the machinery. Yeah. You no longer see it. I always, the moment you start talking about like what you just did a moment ago, you started talking about the evil and humans waking up, you will get to a place, hopefully, eventually, where you understand that this world is perfect is as good as it gets when it comes to being trained because that outrage that builds in you and all that, you know, you, you basically getting angry about how is it possible there's so much injustice. That's the process of self-defining. That's what you're supposed to go through because in this process you learn what you're not. And when you know what you're not, eventually you will discover what you are. And when you see the world for what it is, I'm always, I always say, I'm like Cypher in Matrix. I always say, I no longer see wars, evil, and pedophiles. No, I just see less and less and less. Like Cypher, he says, I only see, I don't see code. I just see humans, you know, restaurants, that kind of stuff. That's the moment when you realize that this is what this reality is. It's not some kind of a hell on earth when every, where everything is crazy. No. You hear about the plane crash. You're like, oh, so 250 souls decided they're going to end their journey in this way. That's pretty much what it is. You hear about a war and you go, oh, they basically wanted to see what it feels like to go through, you know, being injured, to losing a loved one. People will go crazy when you tell them that. When I talk about the law of one and evil being an artificial human construct, they all go, oh, so you're saying that, uh, you know, baby dying from cancer, that they deserved it. And I go, how do you know that baby wasn't Hitler and now needs to work all this karmic nonsense that they have on them? They're going to be doing this forever because that's a lot of existences they ended. But again, it's actors on a stage all playing different roles that have the same purpose. It's for you to get better at whatever you're supposed to be. It's your developmental path. And this reality, the more you suffer, the quicker you learn. About as long as your mind is open. If it's not, that's just pointless suffering. Yeah. Hmm. Right Right. Right now, uh, it seems like uh, the world is in kind of a materialist paradigm where uh, religion, it's still there. It might not be as popular as it used to, but like, there's a like there's a demographic of people that is highly science materially materialistly you know focused they see uh existence as kind of like a mechanical cog uh what is that all about in the yeah, scheme of things that's a that's a very good question well first of all it's not science it's scientism it's basically another form of religion because it has nothing to do with, um, you know, critical approach where you try to discover the truth. No. First of all, the educational system is funded. It is designed to the lowest standard for you to learn as little as possible so that you basically don't question what you're being told. So you're supposed to uh, just fulfill orders. Your job is to basically do what you're told. And the best example is... is medical establishment where if you want to become a doctor, you will go through, you know, through these five years of college, whatever, then you become PhD, whatever. But throughout all this time, you will have a few hours of nutrition lessons. Your knowledge about nutrition will be marginal. There, there will be none of it. Like you will know nothing about nutrition. But what people don't understand is that food, number one, is supposed to be and used to be your medicine. That's the main thing, what food is supposed to be. What is it today? It's poison. 90% of everything you have in your supermarket, in your shopping mall, that didn't exist 100 years ago. You yeah. really didn't have all of it. And yeah, there's like I mean, paintings of what, you know, a grapefruit might have looked like 100 years ago or something <laughs> in there. 
they've been genetically modified to look more appealing, probably be sugarier, you know? That's not the, that's not the biggest problem. I mean, how many people eat grapefruit? Most people eat processed meats. If they actually eat only, I think it's like five groups. They're wheat, soy, um, palm oil, then you have sugar, and what else is that? Well, that's basically what it is. If you look at food, I mean, compare a cheese sandwich, a tomato and cheese sandwich, and spaghetti. What is it? It's the same food. It has a different form, but it's the exact same ingredient list. It's wheat, pasta, and cheese. And it's just prepared differently. But you eat, you know, you eat it for this thing, you eat for lunch or breakfast. The other thing, you eat for dinner, right? But it's the same food. You eat the same food over and over again. So, you know, you don't even need to go far to realize that if medical establishment is controlled, then everything else doesn't matter. The rest of science, if you want to call it science, it's the same model of functioning. You're being given textbooks, you learn it by heart, and then you repeat the same mantra. That's why people believe that, you know, diseases or there's plenty of diseases. No, there's one. It's your autoimmune system going, what do you want me to do with this donut? That's pretty much what every disease is. Right. It's like, that's all it is. It's your immune system going, screw it, I'm, I'm done, I'm not gonna do anything else. And it just gives up on you. That's how your body works. You're feeding it nonsense. It's like pouring pudding into your car and expecting it to, to, to be you know, <laughs> Lamborghini. That's pretty much what we're doing for ourselves. Like your body looks at this and goes, mm. what am I supposed to do with this? I cannot yeah. really heal your wounds or fix your arteries with, I don't know, with three, three bags of Haribo gummy bears. Like there's nothing we can do with this, it's junk. So yeah. that's pretty much what we do. But when you talk about uh, scientists, then immediately I hear crooks. There's no real scientist because if you do real science, you're never gonna get tenure, you're not gonna get given the license or their license is going to be taken away from you and that yeah. pandemic again that showed us what real science is the difference between science and scientists real scientists are in their basements so uh we're going to change gears just a little bit here uh we've talked about machine elves and kind of like their purpose and humanity inside of all of this um where does god fit into all this? Or is there a God? Mm, that's a very difficult one because um, when I uploaded this video about religion and spirituality, I, I realized that there's a very important distinction between, you know, digital hippies like us and, uh, you know, devout Christians who live in, in the, you know, Bible Belt or whatever. Um, yeah. They believe in a bearded man in the sky we know that someone controls reality. That's the difference. And we're, we're, we're right, pretty much. We know that there's a creator. We acknowledge him, her, it, but it's not a bearded man in the sky. Is it duality or non-duality? No, no, no. There is a creator. That, well, the whole theory of existence, apparently, is that the entity that is everything that control, well, it doesn't control, it's basically something that exists, there's only one entity, it decided to divide itself, to fracture itself into like tiny fragments. So it divided itself into different universes and these universes were divided into different worlds. These worlds were divided into tinier managers or, you know, sub-gods. They created the realms. Um, it's difficult to say if there is a God, but apparently there is a manager of this reality and I met him. I met something like a manager the first time I asked for contact with God. I met a guy that looked like Richard Branson, uh, and that's probably the image I was expecting. And they said, oh, we can talk one day. And I saw on the horizon that there is something incredibly powerful. And that guy was in charge and he said, yeah, I'm in charge here. I'm in charge of this dimension. And I'm like, are you God? And he was like, huh, you call me many things, but no, I'm not God. I'm basically this entity that controls here, all of this, right? Yeah. But I saw in the background something I didn't have access to, and I was like, okay, that explains to me everything. I'm going to make a video about this. And I made a video about God. He's not really what we think, right? 
Yeah. And that's the manager. I, uh, if you look at the history of religions and what we used to worship before the reset, it used to be the sun. And I think, I don't want to go into this, I'm going to make a video about the sun soon, but apparently that's our God. That's our manager. It has a metaphysical form of, of the sun, right? Um, mm, just a quick disclaimer. Yeah, if, if you were to look into the sun and the science behind the solar, everything, you'll find out that this is a ball of energy not far from us. Uh, it's tiny and it has some weird properties that we don't understand. So that, that's the science, the real science, right? So that's the thing. But next time, a few I think years or months or years later, I decided I want to meet whatever this energy is. At that time, you know, machines have been talking to me for so long about the energy. I said, I want to see what energy is. And they said, well, well, we'll show you when you're ready. But one day, they were like, okay, we're going to show you what the energy is. Are you ready? And I said, I think I am. And they said, you're not, but here it goes. And they basically switched off my consciousness. They erased my existence. That's something I've never experienced. It was the only time I experienced that. I just ceased to exist. Everything went into shock. Ego death. Hmm? Is that ego it, death? What's that? Is that is what you're describing ego death? No, no, no. no. I went through ego death. That's something completely different. Uh, Many people talk about no longer being a human, and they call it ego death. Well, I've never been in a state where there was nothing but not colors nothing it's like you go to sleep but you know that you're still awake it's super difficult to experience and uh, sorry to explain but that happened for a moment and that was followed by that energy that showed up and it was so and it's just the most powerful experience i've had on half a gram of mushrooms again uh, it was so overwhelming and so weird and intense is nothing that compares to it and it was this rainbow river of energy and it told me everything's made of me i'm in everything i'm it and it was just i mean keep in mind that before i met an entity that was as big as the universe that energy was bigger than that it's it's impossible to describe it in human words but ever since i experienced that i know that everything in this reality is a part of it and we are part of it so when you call it god it's such an uh, offensive understatement that it's absolutely ridiculous because it's mainly because of what we decided to call god right yeah you know you you go to a church you pray whatever from my perspective that thing we call god it it doesn't exist it's a fairy tale that was invented to put you know to distort reality but also to lead us in the wrong direction and people who worship god i mean if you look at jesus muhammad buddha they were all humans they were alive and we have stories confirming that whether they're real or not that's a different matter but yeah, we had a muslim guy on that like i don't maybe i'm just too dumb but it's almost sounded like um the way he was describing allah was almost like uh just a different way of describing um, source or yes, rock, 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 rock bottom. Yeah, yeah. There is many Muslims who watch forty-four videos and they go, "You're right, brother. That's how it works." So many times you'll find people who actually no, but these are. It's not about them being religious. It's about them understanding reality. They are very. They're either very open-minded or they're very advanced, and they see this, and they just decided that in their country. That's how we see God. That's what I'm going to subscribe to. You know, had they been born in, let's say, I don't know, Russia, they would have believed in this different kind of God, right? It's just a coincidence that that's how they see God. But the truth is that these religious people, those who say they believe in God, you talk to them, you will see that the level of their awareness is very, very low. Like these people use religion as crutches not to go anywhere further. They decided I'm just gonna I'm just gonna stay here. I'm gonna take this label. I'm gonna put it on myself. I'm I'm whatever Christian, whatever. I'm good here. I don't need to know anything else. And that's where they end their journey. A lot of people do that. A lot of people do that. Well, of it, can, course. it doesn't well, just have to be religion. It can be you know, like you said earlier, scientism. Exactly. It's pretty much. There's not much difference between religion and, and you know and, and what scientists believe in now. Right. But 
the thing is, it doesn't get you closer to realizing the truth. And it's, you know, you tell them there is no God, it's this blasphemy. It's, you know, you're not supposed to say that. But yeah, they're going to get upset. Yeah. And you can understand because you're basically denying their existence. You're canceling the only thing that makes their, makes their life uh, feel, like fulfilled, right? It's the only thing that matters to them. I'm not saying this, that there is no God, because I don't understand it. I've met the manager, and I've met the energy. They're not called God, and the entities told me, well, sorry, not the entities, the manager told me, yeah, you call this thing God, whatever. Hopefully you didn't act like a Karen when you met the manager. (laughs) What what do you mean by that? (laughs) The term Karen, he's just being funny. Yeah, well, well, whatever you want to call it, even you know, even the words we have are funny because we don't really have a word for that. Like you, you either go to God, which is this bearded dude, or you go to you know energy. That means nothing because there's energy between atoms. There's an energy in your you know power socket. You don't understand what energy is. It's only when you have the opportunity to be confronted with it. And I didn't even know myself seeing it and, and talking to it. I didn't even know if that's what it is. But people who come back from near that experiences, they all say the same thing. It's a rainbow energy made of light, and it's everything here is made of it. It's not God. It, it's not what I'm sorry. It might be God, but it's not what we call God. Yeah. Um, most of my knowledge now that confirms everything comes from these transcripts of the elite insider, and I'm not sure if they're true, but they gave me a lot of insight into. What I understood um, through mushroom inside that. So basically, I'm trying to understand if that's a part of the of this this knowledge we're supposed to have access to. But they said these insiders. They said religions are here to destroy your understanding of reality and also for you to be a sinner because if you believe in Jesus, you believe in a human being, and you're not supposed to. Also, your God or whatever you want to call it, the true God, the true manager here. I think it's. But according to them, it's Yahweh. That's our manager. That's that's their name. Um, you're supposed to acknowledge it and offer your yourself to the disciples, basically whoever is here on their journey, which is other humans. You're supposed to offer yourself and say, "I'm here to help. Can I help? Can I love?" That's apparently the only way you should approach other humans. You're not supposed to worship anything or anyone. Nobody needs that. It, it, it's not really a prerequisite to being, you know, saved or whatever. No, you're here to improve on your, whatever, fall, your, your flaws, whatever you ha- have to work out. You're supposed to work on that. You're supposed to help others with this and be as good as a, of a human as possible. And again, that's the same element of becoming a perfect human being. And every religion talks about can that. You become so per- can you become perfect in this life? Well, I'm assuming that that's when you get released from here. That's right. when you, you come to this reality. You're no longer bothered by addictions, by earthly vices. You no longer have problems with yourself. You get to that stage. You're like, okay, I'm done. And I think that's what these monks uh, locked up in basements for 40 years. That's what they're doing. That's pretty much being close to that. When you're basically studying the wisdom of the universe and wisdom of the supernatural and you're no longer bothered by earth you basically don't have a problem being on earth i always would like to see that dalai lama in the basement if i put it in a call center and see how long he stays sane and how long he's going to be holier than though but <laughs> yeah. i'm assuming at some point they must have gone through this phase of getting angry uh working in a corporation or whatever yeah. but it's difficult to say what the, the religious purpose here is. I see religions as a distortion of truth and as a destruction. That's what I see it as. And I don't like the word God anymore. Does, the, thing, does, the, does the term Christ consciousness mean anything to you? Yeah, well, apparently, according to the insider, Christ was one of the entities that came here. Uh, it decided to come to Earth and give us all the information that we need so that we can develop. Well, there was a problem with Earth. So the, the story in Bible apparently is true, that we have paradise and we didn't really develop. It was a problem. Like We were just happy, enjoying ourselves. We were going nowhere. And the manager of this reality, Yahweh, turned to whoever's in charge of this part of reality, like I don't know, the Council of Twelve Wise Men, whatever. One of those, I don't know what it is. 
Uh, everybody who comes back from NBE, they talk about the same council of elders, and the insider talks about that too. <clears throat> so I'm assuming it's real. Uh, they decided that we're going to send highly advanced, higher density beings to introduce polarity, and these people are Luciferians, right? They came here and they started messing things up in a way that creates, you know, they wreaking havoc on Earth, and they're doing a pretty good job. We must admit, we're developing nicely thanks to them, right? I was born in a family where my grandmother went through four concentration camps. I was born in communism. Now we're going back to digital communism. It's, it's working pretty well. We're going to be poor, and uh, you own nothing. You'll be happy, right? So it's it's the same thing over and over again. That's what they're doing. But the reality is that um, all of this is happening because the the the, the paradise that we had was a utopia. It didn't really get us anywhere. It didn't help us in anything. So, again, this thing of comfort, you know, this thing where you're supposed to be happy and enjoy yourself, it wasn't working. It wasn't really getting us anything. And now this world is working again. It's apparently what it was supposed to be. It's just that, one more thing I wanted to mention, apparently we're getting too addicted again. Apparently there's a problem now. Everybody talks about the same thing. They're saying that uh, the world is no longer what it used to be because it's too easy for you to sleep through your existence. And that's, I mean, if you look at your phone and the internet, the amount of porn you have access to, you know, junk food, drugs, it is super easy to just be bored and like, okay, I'm going to do nothing, just enjoy myself. So I think we're slowly going back to that place where we were supposed to get out of. So it's apparently Earth is becoming a problem now. So they're going to introduce something, and we're talking about harvest and all kinds of stuff. Well, um, you mentioned that you mentioned the, uh, the the division in the world right now, uh, with everything that's going on, and si uh, sides being uh, drawn, lines in the sand, or so have it. Uh, well, what 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 are are we going through a global shift right now? Is humanity getting ready yes. to like ascend to another level? Like they call yes. it sometimes like Age of Aquarius or something like that. Are we well, according towards that? I don't want to give too much attention, too much time to these insiders because there's like five scripts, five transcripts. I don't know if they're real, and I got my Facebook page got deleted after I uploaded that video. So I'm assuming. There is some truth to it, but I'm not sure if it's true, if it's not another distraction. There's, you know, there's layers of propaganda and, and misinformation. It's the misinformation with the misinformation. So I don't want to go down that path. Yeah. All I know is that it ties into a lot of other things. It connects with a lot of machine of messages, a lot of NDE experiences, and people who have the memory. So some of it is true. It just goes a little bit too far. It feels too sci-fi. But okay, let's let's accept it for what it is. There is a global awakening happening, and it's a struggle uh, of this this group of people, apparently, the Luciferians, you call them whatever you want, um, they are struggling with being imprisoned in this reality because they are doing, they're trying to do a good job of um, making our life miserable, but we're, we're waking up really fast. And also, it coincides with um, this harvest. I don't know if it's if it's a, a, a spiritual thing or if it's a physical thing. I don't know if the pandemic, if it's not a part of it. Whatever theory you might have, something's happening at the moment. We can tell something's shifting. And and when the pandemic happened, I had my normal friends, my NPC friends, calling me up going, dude, you have the insight on this thing. Tell me. What's the info? Tell me. What do you know? I need to understand because I'm clueless and I'm scared. So something shifted. Of course, they went back after you know, everything was lifted. They like go back to calling me a tinfoil hat. That's you know that's the thing that they do. But something changed because it's much easier to talk to people now. And we talked in Star Pilot. We actually recorded a talk that about this. It's it's coinciding with the change of perception of time. It's something that I've noticed recently. I used to look at clocks when I was a kid because I couldn't sleep and I know how long one second would take. And now I look at the clock, that second is no longer the same second. It's a completely different time unit. It goes really fast and everybody's saying the same thing. The time has sped up. Like I used to count days, now I'm counting weeks. 
And it's not a matter of age, because children notice the same thing. It looks like something has shifted. So there's a lot of changes in this reality that we don't understand, and we have no, no idea what's going on. We're basically trying to figure it out. But if you're not trying to open your eyes and get all this you know, contradictive knowledge, like, like the insider, the NDE experiences, that's what 44 is doing. If you don't have access to 44, you'll never realize what's going on. You'll, well, the first level of understanding of reality is you knowing the lie. That's why I put such an emphasis on people understanding that they're living a lie. That's why I started making these conspiracy videos that became a problem for many people. Because if you don't wake up, you will never get out of this little bubble of unconsciousness. You, know? you are you like a asking. machine of interesting things. <laughs> yeah, well, well, that's the thing. These interesting things are resonating with you for a reason. It's your intuition telling you, like, look, idiot. That's what you're supposed <laughs> to go to. You're supposed to look at this. Don't watch Netflix. Watch this, right? Yeah. And it, it's funny because, for example, my history of uh, working in offices was made for the first half was made of me sitting in front of a computer with an internet connection and no supervision. I was, I was working for huge companies and I was always doing the same thing, having nothing to do and having internet connection. And I spent years just researching stuff. I would go to conspiracy websites trying to understand what this world is about and I spent years researching this. And it's not a coincidence, it was supposed to happen. When that ended, I was given access to mushrooms. But basically, the thing you were talking about, um, you were asking about the silicon being introduced into our reality. That's something I didn't answer before. That's what's happening at the moment. They're trying to merge us with silicon because that's how they will be able to control us. They have a big problem, these Luciferians. They have a problem, apparently, because they cannot get out of here. They're trying to, but they're not going to do this until they finish their job. And it seems like we're no longer interested in participating. We're, we again go into the paradise mode where just, it's not super cool, but the moment you put on virtual reality goggles, that thing is crazy. Like this takes away your reality forever. It's, you think phones are addictive? Wait until this thing takes over. It's gonna take not 10 years like Apple iPhone did. No, it's gonna be a few months. It's crazy because there's already porn on it. If you haven't seen it, wow. Wait for it. This is crazy stuff. Your body actually reacts to another human being. Like you will not get an erection because you're in front of a naked stranger. And it's, it's your brain is like, oh, we have a human in front of us. And you try to smell them and all kinds of stuff. You you, you react to them like you never did before. Like you, you do this every time you meet a person in real life. You don't you're not aware of this. Yeah. But virtual reality is stimulating that. That's how crazy it is. Yeah. So <clears throat> they have some kind of an agenda merge us with silicon and create new reality. It's going to be the internet of things. It's already well underway. People don't understand, like, people were crazy about 5G and it's going to fry our brain. No, 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 it's not going to do that. It's going to allow you to exist in the reality of instant communication. That's what 5G really is. It's supposed to connect your electric car. It's supposed to connect your microchip in your hand. It's going to connect everything. It's going to be one virtual reality and you're going to be a part of it because this headset is big the oculus quest 2 that's a heavy big chunk of, of plastic no yeah. it's going to be google lens it already exists yeah. it's going to be a contact lens that will introduce you to basically you living in augmented reality it's already here people don't know this but right. everything is already here it just hasn't been implemented. That's all it is. This is intense. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is intense. Oh, my son just got an Oculus. And, yeah. Uh, I tried it and I thought it was mind blowing. I thought it was awesome. Um, but yeah, I guess with Neuralink and everything you're kind of talking about, man, this is like, uh, I don't know what's going on, but this is intense. What you need to concentrate <laughs> on is you interacting with yourself because that's the only thing that matters. Is you interacting with so that's the purpose here. You come here, there are different scenarios, different reality. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if uh, there are wars, if there is whatever it is, you are going through lessons. And if you phase out all the noise, everything that you're trying, that the establishment is trying to um, put you to sleep with, if you turn it off, you'll see that the only thing you're left with is what's inside of you. 
And that thing is totally neglected. You don't pay attention to it. You look outside of yourself and you think you're like, oh, this thing is important, that thing is blah, 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 blah. And you reach for this, you know, Instagram spirituality, I'm gonna be a shaman, whatever. The truth is, the only thing that matters is what's inside of you. That thing, that's the true you, the higher self, if you, you don't look there. Like you even, you don't even know what its purpose is. I made this video called Life Purpose Formula. I came up with this uh, formula where you can fill out a spreadsheet, a simple Excel spreadsheet that asks you 16 questions and you're supposed to answer them and categorize the answers. That will be a huge eye-opener because you'll realize that there's only a few categories of everything in your life. It turns out that you have a list of like eight or 10 things that you came through with and you're supposed to work on that. And I always say, like, you work on your mortgage, you figure out where your son goes to college, and you have everything planned. One thing you don't plan is your life. You don't look what you're made of, where you're going, and what you're supposed to achieve. Nobody does that. And basically, that's all that matters. It's the only reason why you're here, to work on things that you're supposed to accomplish. Nobody has that. Nobody has a map. But that's ultimately is the only reason why you breathe, why you consume food, and why, why you're posting on Instagram. That's all there is. It's you interacting with yourself and going through list of purposes. And whether you're being merged with silicon or you're going to be rolled by establishment, it's always going to be the same. Hunger Games will provide the same options for development as being a millionaire in 2015. Right. Hey Peter, um, yeah. th I, for, I want to say like we've been going for a while now. This has been fantastic. Um, uh, I think we should wrap it up soon. But I have one last uh, question for you, uh, cool. and we ask it for m most of our guests uh, that come on the show. Uh, with all that you do, uh, inside of all these spiritual experiences, maybe you could share with our audience maybe one that has been the most profound eye-opener for you. And then uh, when you're done, why don't you tell our audience, you know, where they can find you, what you're, you know, what you're doing, what you got going on, and then uh, we'll wrap things up. Yeah, well, I would say the whole contact with Machino, that's the most profound thing because I cannot distinguish between, you know, meeting the divine, the, the rainbow energy, that was the divine, that, that was something very profound, but that was within the scope of contacting the metaphysical world. So I always say that mushrooms gave me a second life because the things that I learned and experienced on mushrooms are something that most people will give a lot for. Like it's something incredibly important. Most people don't know what it is, but if they they knew what it is, they would give much more than what they're offering now because it's so intense, so important, and so life-changing that, as I said, it feels like it was given second life because you're experiencing the levels of both joy and hope that you will never experience in real life. This real life is very easy, very physical, and very primitive. Mushrooms take it away. Mushrooms allow you to be your probably your your spiritual self, your energy form. It allows you to go beyond human existence. You're not going back home yet, but you get a glimpse into that. And I guess it's small enough, this window is small enough for me to allow infect others with this curiosity and you know courage. Because it takes courage to take mushrooms to to Ditch your friends and your corporate life. It, it is, it takes gut to do that. So I would say that's probably the most important thing. But if you're asking what is it that I would want to share with people, what I would want to tell them. If there's anything you're supposed to take away from this podcast, from this conversation, um, yeah, no, don't be afraid to who you are that's it sounds like a cliche but people yeah. don't understand how important it is you you're driven by your ego your ego controls everything you're trying to fit in you're trying to be liked and you want to be whatever famous you want to you want people to click on your social media posts whatever it is try to find and be your authentic self yeah well that's 
that's pretty much what it's all about. You come here with amnesia. You, you're, you know, you're under a veil of forgetfulness. How are you supposed to do what you're supposed to do? You don't know who you are. And trust me, this is a cliche like, oh, discover who you are. You have no idea who you are. You, that's what I said, try the life purpose formula, fill it out and see what comes out. First of all, you'll see how difficult it is even to ask yourself questions like what you're made of. You will have no access to it unless you're smart or you've had psychedelic experiences. It's a difficult question who you are. If I was to ask you, don't talk about your job and your preferences. Tell me who you are and you have nothing. There is nothing you can tell me unless go deep inside of yourself and you discover the thing. So it takes courage to be yourself and it takes courage to discover yourself. And I would say there are many ways to get there. Uh, it doesn't need to be machine health. It doesn't need to be psychedelics. It can be a lot. I, I mean, psychedelics are the express elevator to the hundredth floor. It's going to take you, <laughs> you can take stairs if you want to be my guest. But yeah, mushrooms do that. It's five seconds yeah. instead of, you know, 30 years of psychotherapy. It's, it's or very good. years of meditation, maybe. Exactly. Yeah, I, I made that video as well. I said, listen, if you want to get there, you'll get there in a helicopter. You don't have to walk. That's basically what psychedelics are. It's not only medicine, it's also an express lane to who you are. And you need to tell you, I mean, I know people who've been trying to take them for, for the last 10 years, long before I knew what they were. And they were talking like, oh, I'm going to take mushrooms. They've been saying this for 10 years. They still haven't done it because they're scared. They're scared of not what it will do to them, but what they'll find out deep inside. They know what I found out deep inside. So my message would be, yeah, don't be afraid to be yourself and discover your, your, your true self. And also open your freaking mind because everything you know is a joke. It's not even a lie. It's a joke on you. <laughs> I just want to let you know that the new variant of COVID is called Ninja. Mm. Ponder on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, interesting. We have a variant called Ninja. That's <laughs> how funny they are. They're like, oh, they believe that? Let's give them Ninja variant. And I don't you believe that it's true. That's Anthony awesome. Weiner is sending pictures of his Johnson to girls. The new president's <laughs> name is Trump, and the new COVID variant's called Ninja. <laughs> exactly. And you watch the uh, <laughs> trial while Giselle Maxwell is going to be behind closed doors and she's free to go. So, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. This was super interesting, man. Yeah, I got to say, you. you know, thank you so much, uh, Peter, for doing this. Uh, it was great. Uh, when's when's your book coming out? Hopefully, it's going to be printed uh, September October time because I decided I'm just gonna close it. I'm just gonna publish it no matter what, whatever spelling mistakes, whatever uh, incomplete messages. I'm just gonna close it and print it. And unless we have some meteorites falling from the sky, I'm assuming it's gonna be. In a few months time. And what's the what's the title? Do you have a title yet? Well, that's a problem because the working title is Machine Elf Encyclopedia, but it needs to be something that will sell. So I'll have to make it cute and sexy. I'll, I haven't figured it out yet, but I'll, I'll work on it. All right. Well, I'm so sure. cute and sexy machine elf. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You, you got it. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so if uh, if you're interested in Peter's work, folks, uh, you can follow him on his YouTube channel, which is 434, and he'll have all the links to all the other things he's got going on. You can support him through all his outlets uh, there if you, if you want. Uh, for our stuff here, all our stuff's in the description box. And if you guys liked the show, uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe, like, share with a friend. And everybody, until next time... Stay, Stay spiritual. spiritual.